everybody. Welcome to Camel City Chat. I'm John McPherson, and I am here with Stu Epperson Jr., who I've known since probably like 16 years old. Long time. Long Too time, long. right? Yes, sir. Where'd you go to high school? Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor. Okay, so let's, we got to start off. Okay, here we go. Ready? Stu, you're the founder and president of the Truth Network, yep. right? Um, so, or Truth Broadcasting. So, let's start here. Where are you from, and how long have you been in Winston-Salem? Well, I'm from Winston-Salem, okay. right here. I've been here for, I'm 51. Okay. So I've been here for 51 years and nine months. So you're 51? Yeah. Oh. Because I'm like 54, so how? We're we getting that. I thought we met, so gosh, you would have been. Okay, all right, so I'm trying to figure this is happening. <laughs> okay, so now you, um, uh, so you've been here all that time. We got, we got plenty of things to talk about there. Now the next thing is, is um, what is your favorite place to eat? And we got to be careful here. You right. got to be real careful. Yeah. So many good places. Well, you already commented about Krispy Kreme being next door. It's so. right next door. I know. Should we just uh, take a break and we, run we over can, and come yeah. right back and we should, bring we our producer back team? With, I mean, they need it. some things. We got to yeah. feed them. Yeah. Goodness. So, well, there's places here now that are weren't here before. Right. Um, and there's places that have changed. I know you like Real Q. I do. Yeah. And I like, of course, downtown Campbell City Barbecue. Right. They've done well. Uh, Camel City Chat. There is uh, River Birch Lodge, right? Robin Hood Road. Well, know, River which Birch used Lodge, to be a bank, didn't it, or something? Well, I we don't were, know what it used to be. Remember the BK Lounge, the Burger King that used to be there, and all that when we were coming up. And yeah. there was an amazing newsstand. All oh, right. <laughs> now you're talking, Stu. Now you're talking. Any sports magazine? I mean, anything all, you, know, you needed. Cliff Canvas Notes for your uh, source for, for news and knowledge. <laughs> 1978. I lived at that. I had Cliff Notes for whatever we were. You know, this guy. the Canterbury Tales. I'd go in there and yeah, got yeah, the Cliff yeah. Notes. John, help me. You know? yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, no, no. What is this book? Um, no one even remembers that. I mean, that's kind of cool to talk about because it's been well, decades. Yeah, there since used to be a place. That's where right. you could go KNS, baby. and browse oh. magazines, a yes. hundred foot of magazines. Yeah. You could pick a book up. You could yeah, read right the back here. jacket of yeah. it. Not like now. Yeah. I, I miss that part. Yeah. Um, I also don't miss that part. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, okay, so um, and, an interesting tie into River Birch because I know that you also meet there. So we'll talk about that yes. too. Yeah. Um, but now, what do you like to do? So what do you like to do around here? That's a great question. With everything going on, um, we I mean, we love the city. We love all the places to go. To right. man, there used to be a couple of Zach's yogurts back when we were yep. coming up. Remember, yep. and uh, we go get yogurt, get ice cream, hang out. There's a lot of coffee options I've noticed. Right. Th then we I don't think we really went to coffee shops then. As much. No, 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 no. I mean, what, you went to like um, what was it? Uh, it's not news and novels. What's news and novels was over in Greensboro. What was here was Rainbow Cafe. Yeah, you go to that's Rainbow right. Cafe. That's right. Yeah, right. And, and but it wasn't getting coffee is like almost like a daily multiple. You know, like my kids want to go to Starbucks. It's right. like the day's not complete. Like it's almost like they're entitled. It's like, hey, I haven't been yet today. I'm going. You know, we're you know get in the car. Um, so I enjoy doing that. You know, with with uh, children, young people. You know, right. children in my home still. Um, my 15 year old primarily. You have four. Four daughters. And your youngest is? Faith, who is little cub, and she's 15. Okay. Calvary Day School. So she's getting a permit. So I pretty much, what I like to do is when I get home, right? which when she gets out of school, this thing starts going off. Right. And it's either Starbucks or Zach's or any number of places. Oh, so to, she's, it's, you now have a driver. I got to get home and drive and let right. her drive. And it's, I'm like. And, so this kid over here? Yeah. They like went to McDonald's to get like a milkshake each night, you know, to get his get some hours. There you go. And stuff like that. She's always wanting to go hours, and and I'm thinking, well, hey, I can check messages, and then, but then she has this no phone rule for me in the passenger seat. Right. She wants her dad and her to actually connect and talk. I mean, I, that doesn't make sense. I don't think that's good parenting. I'm just kidding. okay. No, that that actually is kind of scary <laughs> that your kid wants to talk. It's kind of neat, you know. So I turn on Kids Bop Kids. Lars in the back. We talk a little bit on the way to school. I got gotcha. you. Know, so. I got gotcha. you. So anyway, so that's kind of what I do. We a lot of stuff, cool things going on. Whether it's a weight game, we like to go some of those and right. and do stuff. And we have other family in town, mom and dad, and so uh, it's a it's kind of a fun fun time. But it's interesting, you know. It, kind of the age of your kids determines a lot of what your activities are, which will change, obviously. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I think the thing that is interesting to me is, since I've known you for all this time period, right, you, you, you leave 
um, uh, Mount Tabor, and then you went to what Masters University, yes, you got sure. your BS, yep. and then Bob Jones for your Masters yep. degree. Um, uh, I got a BS in the same thing you did, communications broadcasting up at App. Solid, right, solid. came back, and you know. Um, now, how long have you all been associated? Was the first station WTOB? So, yeah. So, I came back. So, while I was in high school. Right. Like, during way back when. Right. I was working for Dave Plyler. Right. At WTOB, which used to be right over here in Thruway. Right. Upstairs. Right. And that was a hoot. And right. I was just learning, doing whatever, selling a little time. And then Crazy throughout guy. college, Love I did some Dave. of that. Yep. yep. And then went to get my master's degree and went to a, my dad didn't own any radio stations in Greenville, South Carolina. Right. So I go to get a, a job. Dave Plyler told me to drop a name of a guy there, went right. in, dropped his name, picked it back up, dropped it again, picked it back up. And third time they said, hey, we'll give you an interview and right. worked in sales for a cool news talk, a similar to WSJS, but in Greenville. Right. While I got my master's degree. The old WSJS, by the way. That's exactly right. right. We got to, we got to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Got my master's degree at Bob Jones University, Master of Science in Broadcast Management. Right. So I'm working in at a regular old, you know, secular broadcast station. Hadn't started any Christian radio stations there, even though my dad and uncle had done that quite a bit. And then SJS had a job opening, really cool thing. It's crazy. I talked to Mike Finley yesterday. Mike who, Finley, yep, yep, right. And was who Browser I worked, Facebook, yep. worked with him, you know, back in the day. But and you worked for Tom Hamilton, right? I worked for Tom and Howard, yeah. yep. And But Mike, I believe it was Mike and my dad were on the same plane coming from D.C. from different events. Right. And Mike just had mentioned they had this sales opening at SJS. Right. Which was kind of an elite, you know, deal then. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. And Craig was so there then? My dad mentioned it to me. Somehow I got a name and a number, talked to Tom, maybe. He said, well, here's how you get an application. And I, I don't know if he mailed me one or I don't even know how we did things right. back then because we had pagers. We didn't have you know, right. cell phones and texting and all that. So I filled out an appy, came and interviewed on a Saturday because I'm working full time in Greenville. And I loved it. I loved the opportunity and I loved the, the, the caliber of the people and the training I would get in broadcasting. Still not my dad's station, you know. And so I made the transition from Greenville back to North Carolina. And this is this what ninety five ish? Uh, yep. Yeah. Like nineteen ninety five. And yeah. you know why I know that? How do you know that? Because I remember you coming in, and at that point was when I was doing um, book talk. And so remember Chris Ampar? <laughs> so here's the scary thing: you're never going to believe this. What's that? I've found about five shows from then, and I've converted them. And I'm starting to upload them. I have another. No way. Yeah, yeah. It's great. So I'm have, glad you're doing that. I'm I glad have you're doing that. Chris Ampar and I interviewing James Mishner. Um, I just found my John Grisham interview. Unbelievable. I think I've got Stuart Woods, and I still have three or four out there. When, when you leave today, I'll show you the box. I've got a yeah. box, and then I found this thing. So um, I did, I think, what was it, 95, maybe to 97 or so, um, or maybe 93, 96. Yeah. And that's when I remember you coming in there. Um, well, isn't it, but it, not to flip the tables here on the interview thing, but isn't it cool to for you to be, you know, using your communications, you know, broadcast that's why I do degree, this. but yeah, but then, but but with your kind of book connection and the printing right. publishing connection, kind of all that fleshing out, and it happened what twenty some years ago, you know, <laughs> twenty five so, years so ago. So Craig you know. Cochran, yes, um, Craig yes. sold my dad on us having a um, a book show. And so that's how that all started. Cool. And then, cool. of course, um, someone that you work with, who I'm not going to say his name because uh -oh. I still will not forgive him. But uh, Mike came in, and um, he uh, <laughs> sold my partners on a real estate radio oh, show. Um, and then, um, so that's uh, that was 11 long Saturdays, 11 years. But wow. um, Yeah, so what we did run. that. You still see people that say, Hey, didn't I hear you on the radio? I guarantee you. Oh, no, they say... Um, he can't go anywhere. You can't no, go anywhere. No, no, they say, I, I, I was listening to real estate radio, and I'm like, really? When? And they're like, well, you were on like last week or something. I'm like, uh, it's been like four years now or something. <laughs> I mean, this is our... You're the second... Or, yeah, you're the second show of our fourth season. So oh, this, cool. so you're actually show number 60. I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah, well, no, thank you. So, so you know. Cool. Um, but uh, so with... Uh, your dad got into to, to radio stations? Dad was in radio stations before I was born. And okay. he got the same degree, wildly enough, which I didn't really realize that till later after I got my degree at Bob Jones. It's a very good degree there because they give you hands-on 
in right. the sales, in the technical, in the production, every aspect of broadcasting. They actually put you to work. So right. you're selling the campus media. Right. And if you hit your sales goal, they do pizza parties. You didn't, get, you make a, didn't make a dime, but right. they made a lot of money. And the local community wanted to buy ads in their, you know, they wanted an army right. of 5,000 kids to come to their pizza joint, right, or to come bowl at their bowling lanes or whatever. So uh, dad did that, did real well, married mom. Through that met my uncle, her brother, his brother-in-law, and he had bought some stations and Uncle Ed had been fooling around with some stations. They decided to kind of partner together, and that's what what now is known as Salem Media Group. Right. So that would have so been. So Salem Media Group is your dad and your uncle. My uncle, yes. And then now, um, you are doing Truth. Yes, sir. So and I, you have. Yeah. Hold on. You got yeah. twenty-seven stations, or so is we it have twenty-eight. Well, we we have a total. I brought a little card, and I don't know if this will yeah. show up on the. Well, no. The, Stephen can take a picture of it. Yeah, and awesome. we can do He'll that. take one. But anyway, right, cool. we have. Uh, we have a total of 35 signals that you all right that you own. Yes. Right. So either AM or FM, you know, relayers, translators, and that includes WSJS, which is our newest acquisition. Is that now? Let's think about. It. Is WSJS four so three state three signals? Yes, it's AM 600. It's 103.1 FM. And then North another, Winston. Right. And then another. 101.5 Winston. 104.9 High Point and 93.7 Greensboro. Right. So, so it's, it's got five. Four. Yeah. Yeah. It's total five. five. Yeah. Okay. So. so so I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm in, I'm in Winston-Salem, making great money at WSJS. Right. 600 WSJS. The 600, 1200, don't forget 1200. 600, 1200. And our big country station. <clears throat> 104, <clears throat> WTQR. Oh, yeah. 104.1, WTQR. WTQR. Cutting up and carrying on with Big Paul and Aunt Eloise, right? And all yeah. that. So I was loving it, but I'm also like growing closer to God. I'm married, kids, you know, life comes at you real fast. And I'm sitting here thinking, wow. I knew about some amazing speakers, you know, what we call podcast now, but right. then just programs. Right. And I'm like, find, uh, searching the dial to try to find some of that, you know, right. and I, you know, is it, you know, so I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm talking more to my dad, my uncle, they, they were doing this, this Christian talk format, which right. is tw about 25 to 28 minute little programs every, you know, every half hour, right. you know, all day long. Focus on the family, James Dobson. Right. You know, Dr. Graham had one. Uh, David Jeremiah, Charles Stanley. You know, a lot of the, guy, the good authors, TV right. guys, have a radio program. And these formats really caught on. I'm like, looking around Winston, like there's nothing 24-7. we got to get Joyce Meyer on something. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So, yeah. anyway, so, so, so that's kind of what led to uh, a four-in-the-morning wake-up call from the Lord to a bunch of other stuff led to the launch of the Truth Network. Right. And I, the, the irony of it, my dad's company, Salem didn't have a radio station in Salem. Right. And so that's when I took over from him the old WTOB and right. kind of bought it on a note because right. I didn't have cash. And he was glad because he was focused on Salem. Right. And TOB did good, you know, did good, had a good team and all that, but like it, it needed a little, you know, maybe a little energy, you know. And Yeah, because so. TOB always had issues because it was going up against 104, and 104 was just... It's I mean, tough. Yeah, 1380 yeah. was, you it's know... It's tough. A country, supposedly a country station, yeah. but 104 was was yeah. the one. But, yeah, but it's a, but it's a heritage yeah. station, and yeah. I simply came in and wanted to improve it, but wanted to add specifically this niche, this Christian spoken word, positive right. encouragement. Not You've guys, done okay, you know. What's that? You've done okay. Well, 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 we were able to from, <laughs> from there. We were able to get a Greensboro signal, and then we were able we actually were able to to find AM 830, which we bought from WXII, to get a 50,000 watt signal to right. do that format, and just kind of, and so that's kind of our main mission. Uh, to, to encourage people to experience truth everywhere. Right. Uplift them, encourage them, bless them. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a break, and you're going to finish the truth message here in just a second. We'll be right back with more Camel City Chat. Welcome back to Camel City Chat. I'm John McPherson. I'm here with Stu Epperson, Jr. Stu is um, the owner, president, uh, founder of the Truth Network and uh, Truth Broadcasting. You said you had, like, how many signals now? 30-something? 30 35 so signals. 35 yep. signals. Okay, so, you know, we have another... Uh, let, let's. I'm going to digress because I have ADD and I'm not. Digress, to. man. So we have another connection. One of my friend's kids is married to your daughter, Harrison. Oh my! Yeah, he, he just called me a little bit ago. Really? Like, tell good, him I said good, hey. Good thing I didn't take that call. Yeah, tell so him put him on speaker. No, no, no. Harrison, no, no. you're on a huge. You know, yeah, no, no, we need no, no, a ratings, buddy. No, Jump no, in. No, no, no. <laughs> no How but, cool! Yeah. 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 So um, uh, I've known Marion White. We worked together when I worked at Baptist Hospital. How about that? And um, but just a great kid. I've yeah. known him since he was probably you know like. Five or six. Unbelievable. Uh, but uh, I remember when he went to school, played yeah. ball and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and then yeah, it's fine. like, wait a minute, I know who he's marrying. 
<laughs> so, but yeah, so you have four kids. Yep. Well, five um, with him. Yeah, five with him. Right? Finally got that son. Yeah, right. So what? So so tell me about what, what's Julie do? Well, Julie is a Who manages them. She's a developer of future leaders. Right. Okay. A la full time home manager. I do not want that job. That I'm is the hardest you. job. Well, out she's there. worked hard with me. I mean, yeah. getting taking care of all of them, and she does a lot to really support me with everything right. that's going on. And and we've got. Uh, a daughter who's uh, trying to be a rocket in New York City, okay. and she's really close. Uh, we've got another daughter who's a freshman at Lynchburg at Liberty University, right. loves it there, and she's. Put, I saw you there on Facebook the I other was day. On Facebook right. the other day with her, we have a, a daughter still in school at Calvary Day School, right. and uh, who's 15 and going on 50 or 40 or 30, right. whatever. And then we've got a son-in-law who I love, who's right. also in broadcasting on our on our stations in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, they live. Is there. that where they live? Okay. Yep. And it's gotten even busier because now we now Hope and Harrison have a little fella right. named Walker, right. who's pushing two years old on Cinco de Maya. Right. And so we have a grandson. Right. So I'm a grand dude. Yeah. So you're three years younger than me, and you have a grandson that's two. And I, I have a seven-year-old daughter. Hey, listen, buddy. It's all, it all. You know what? It's all in God's time. Yep. You know what I'm uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy this. We way. can both give each other yeah. advice now, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just stay away from squishmallows. That's stay exactly right. That's it. Um, but, Don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> yep. But so with with all of this, I mean, you got other things you did here, and I want to come back to the radio stuff because yeah. I think that'll probably be the meat of it. But you've written two books. Yes. Okay. What was that like? crazy. I wrote them both on, remember when the, so this is my smartphone and that's my smartphone card holder, which right. is called a, a, an, a, a, it's called a phone wallet. And I brought right. you one. I got one in my pocket to give you a little gift. Okay. Thank you. Someone in your Here world, you. look at you. Look at this. Here you look go. At, you get the I camera love that. Sticker. I'll stick it right in my no, yeah, phone wallet, in your here. Phone wallet Yeah. So the, the original iPhone, the smallest one originally right. from yeah. about seven years, eight years ago was the size of my phone wallet. Right. It was tiny. It could fit inside of this. I wrote both books on that size phone. Without, without, um, without very little voice of that. To text. Very, I did a okay. little time, you know, it was, you know, Siri was still raw then. Right. So I did a little bit of that, but I wrote both of them because here's the deal. Back then, Hope's like a sophomore, junior. Right. Uh, Gracie's probably like, you know, eighth grade or right. something. Joy's, you know. You're uh, sitting watching. Well, I'm not only sitting watching, but like, I don't know where all the iPads are. Right. Like we're buying iPads and laptops and all the kids have them. They're gone. But I have a phone. Yeah. And God said to Moses in Exodus, hey, what's in your hand? He's like, well, the rod. Okay, well, use that rod and yeah. you can do do this and you can cut the Red Sea wide open and all that. So I've got my phone. So I noticed there's a notes thing in there. Yeah. Now, this is a tiny little guy. This is like a little, the smaller one. And, and so, you wrote both books in that? Yeah. I can show you the notes. It's still in there. All the chapters. So I just went one at a time. Boom, boom. Crazy story and how those books came about. Kind of a wild God thing. Right. But um, I just was really compelled with what the first book, kind of maybe it's the lack of logical order that I have in my right. life, but the first book is Last Words of Jesus. The, the last book is First Words of Jesus. Of course. So yeah, kinda, no, you, can't write them, you can't write them in order. What's so maybe it's like it? a prequel. They did it with Star Wars. I mean, yeah. Lucas can do it. Why can't, yeah. you know? So anyway, I was just fascinated with, with the words of Christ as he died on the cross. He said some really powerful dying words and you know you kind of lean in when right. when a famous statesman George Washington Abraham Lincoln when uh, Theodore right. Roosevelt when he died you're not going to believe what he said right i have no idea but i mean i'm sure it was profound well, you know well, what i'm saying was but it, was it jefferson and somebody that the, they who is it that didn't like each other and they um they you were checking to see whether or not the other one had passed away yeah that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. the last words were like yeah. you know what, what, what about you know, him exactly yeah. so but but still but, it, but then I, yeah, humor, humorous little i always throw a little joke in cuz when I'm out doing the author thing and the book signing thing, which I would have done at your store if it was still here. Right, I know, I know. I would have been the first one there. I knew that. All these big box stores. Hey. I mean, they don't do it. They don't cut it. I mean, I know the people in there. I yeah. mean, we could have coffee and you could talk to me about what, you know, Cameron and all the newspapers, the periodicals. The Cameron Kent did a book signing. I know. So, what I'm saying, so, so, but, uh, so, so, the, when you write a book on the famous last words of Christ, of course, they weren't his last words because we believe in the resurrection. We right. celebrate that. Old Salem, right? It's beautiful Easter sunrise service. But, but when you look at those words, everyone suddenly thinks you're an expert. So I have people are saying, hey, so what did, uh, what did this guy say? What did this lady say? What did this you know, heavyweight champion say when he died? Yeah, last who, word, was, so. who was on the head of the coins that they gave, that they gave him <laughs> exactly. to turn on him, right? Yeah. So I, I, I know some. I don't know a lot. But, it's, but anyway, so I leaned in. It's really powerful stuff about while you're being executed, the Savior says, Father, forgive them. Right. I mean, who does that? Right. How about like you've got the power to call down the... You know the nuclear, you know angel, right? You know 
hit on them and you're saying, Father, forgive them. And on and on, he cares about his mom and those dying moments and just some pretty power. So that's what the first book's about. And I just, I really wrote it to, to be a blessing. Well, and, and to get something people. off your chest, too, because it yes. meant something to you. Yeah. Yes. So. And so um, you, you, you do the books, which, you know, blows me away. You, you got, you know, like, you know, 25 kids. I'm just kidding. Well, you're up to five now, you said. Um, and all these things, but you're running this, this business that is just, I mean, it's huge because it's not only, so as, as a realtor, you know, I'm, I'm meeting with clients and marketing properties, et cetera, and all that stuff, but then I've got to go out and like, like last night I went to a, um, an event that was about politics because home ownership is very important and we've got to make sure that the, the people know about um, affordable housing and why right. it's an important issue. With you, you're running a business, dad over here, husband over here, and then now you've got to spread the word for your own faith. You've got to market your business, but then you also, you know, it'd be nice if you did something giving back. That's called a T-ball. I get there. So you go ahead and take that one. Do you do anything to give back? Well, here's what's interesting that happened. Besides your foot, which, you know. Here's what happened in in the midst of all that is um, I'd never been, I've been in radio all my life. Right. So the same age as I've been in Winston, 51 years and nine months, I've been that long in radio. Right. People have asked me that. They've asked me how long you've been going to church, and they've asked me about my drug problem. Right. You know. Don't know about that. You don't know about that? No. Can I, is it okay to? You talk about okay. whatever you want to, yeah. Okay, this isn't planned, so yeah. you guys can post edit. Right. So uh, from an early age, I had a drug problem. Okay. Yeah, mom and dad. Right. Okay? They drug me to church Sunday morning. They drug me to church Sunday night. They drug me to church Wednesday night. They drug me to Awana's Thursday. They drug me to Christian school. They drug me to all kinds of Bible studies. They drug me into the living room when a church started in our house, you know, like 35, 40 years ago. So anyway, that's so anyway. But but that is also part of my story because I was a really good quote unquote Christian on the outside, right? But it never changed on the inside, you know. So it wasn't until I really connected with the Lord and realized that, you know, it's a relationship and a lot of things happened. Started reading the Bible for myself. Instead of taking their word for it, I started reading his word and everything changed, you know, and that that but I'd never in my life ever imagined that I'd be a talk show host. Like doing what you're doing right, right here. I never even would have tw- twenty five years ago, if you said, Stu, you're gonna be doing uh, book talk, right? Or right. doing, th- do it. I'd say, yeah, well, I- I'd laugh at you. And that's Talk Truth Live. Th- yeah, they right. would pull me in right. at SJS. Hey, Katie, voice and ad. No, 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 no. I'm going to say I'm sales. I'm out here with right. Bill Williams and Bruce Gilbert, Carol Hernan, you know, and, Carol and Craig. Herndon, holy yeah, cow. Craig Cochran and, and yeah. John Norman and, you know, you know, Patty Ann and they're our awesome team and Big Paul and Eloise and, you know, Glenn Scott and Smith. And I'm out in sales. I'd take the talent out and I'd talk to clients like you right. and I'd say, hey, hey, we're taking good care of you and, you know, this and that. Right. And I never, ever, you know, I did a little, but I had to do some of that in college, you know, right? And right. I did some it as a kid growing up in TOB, I'd fool around the studios and they'd have me do stuff and I'd have to do a legal ID, which, again, I did not want to be heard on the radio. I never liked my voice until probably my third year or so or second year, Truth Network launched. I just had a burden to do a talk show, not a conservative talk show. We had Rush Limbaugh at SJS. It was right. fine, but he was not getting anyone to heaven. Right. He's not answering the real issues of the soul. Right. Right. You can be the best Republican or the best Democrat, but if you don't have a connection with God who made you, like, you know, what's the point? Why are we here on this earth? Right. You know, so, so, so I had a real burden and also to speak to the issues and to speak to people hurting on a deeper level and to interview awesome Christian experts and authors, you know, right. and stuff like that. So we started this show, my brother-in-law, who was a pastor, and a guy named Preston Parrish, who was an evangelist, started a show called Truth Talk Live. I didn't even press him with that name. And so over the period of about four, five, six, seven months, it was killer. They were doing two hours every day. It was awesome. They had guests on. They did interviews. They did, they did shows on. Uh, if there's so much evil in this world, how can God be a loving God? You know, right. talking oh, about yeah. working yeah. things out, but giving good, sound answers How to can that, these right? things be happening there? If, exactly. If, if, and if whatever the chaos of 2000, Y2K, you know, right. all that stuff, they were, okay. Well, so in like a instant, Preston gets the call from Franklin Graham because right. you know Billy was getting older and Franklin was kind of taking over, and Franklin says, "I need to come run the run the show." Right. So he left to go run the Billy Graham organization. Right. My brother-in-law gets this bizarre, rare throat disease called spasmodic dysphonia. Okay. So he can't talk. 
So here I am frantically trying to call you or call him or call Pastor Paul or whoever right. to say, hey, can you come in and do a radio show and trying to sell her, oh, you'd be great on the radio. Like I was right. desperate. And I called my dad, you know, anybody. Oh, I know it, what your dad did. Yeah, exactly. Same thing my dad did. What I send you to school for? <laughs> Get on the radio. Thank you. Yeah. So, 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 so the show goes on, right? So I... Yeah. So next thing you know, I'm like, okay, here we go. How many years you've been doing it now? Well, so that was in about 2000, somewhere 2000, 2001. That started a 10-year live daily talk show run for me every afternoon from four to six, and abbreviated it somewhere in there from five to six. When did every you syndicate? Day. Started syndication probably about five years in, right. and that was just me getting mad and calling radio stations and saying, hey, will you carry the show? Because like, if I'm going to tell people about Jesus, I want to tell everybody about right. it. Right, and you got thir you had you were up to like 30 or 35 places, yeah. right? Yeah, and so I had, I had uh, yeah, we had 35 affiliates. Did you, you were in like Salt Lake City or something? Yeah, well, we have a station there in the Truth Network. Okay. We bought a station where we couldn't get a, that? where we couldn't get an affiliate. We had to buy a station. <laughs> so that's how we got into Charlotte. That's how we got some other places. Hey, I had, I was on Sirius Satellite Radio. I did a deal with a guy who had a little a Christian channel on Sirius. I had right. callers from Canada, the Bahamas. I had callers from Hawaii. So whoever got Sirius got, you know, Truth Talk. Wow. So it was it was awesome. I would debate atheists. I debate other. Here's the thing. I do. Am I am I Muslim? No. Am I Christian? Yes. Do I disagree with Islam? Absolutely. But I would have Muslims on the air and have a friendly conversation. Right. It's like if I want to lead you to Christ, I'm not going to beat you up and yell at you. So I develop. You know. So I'd have people I'd totally disagree with. To show, to try to show believers, especially myself, that we can disagree, right, but still be friends and be kind. Right. Because you're right. You know, you got to love people into heaven. You can't just get your old King James Bible out and bash them over the head, right? So it was a ton of fun. Right. I'd messed up a ton, probably, but I learned a lot. But I never in my life imagined myself being a live radio host until then. And then about 2000, oh man, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there, it's like the Lord said, "Hey, stop being a." player. I want you to be a coach. Okay. So we had about three talk show hosts in the Truth Network then. And I just, I was worn out, you know, didn't have dinner from five to six for 10 years with my family, you know, like unless I had a guest host, right? So I had to right. kind of dial it down here, you know, and the, the, the Christian radio network is growing. And like, I can't take on these more stations. I'm, I'm like, kind of like our top sales guy and I'm doing a radio show every day. Right. And so, well, you took, yeah, yeah, it's, that's <clears throat> what happens in real estate a lot of times. Oh, the, the, the agent, Creates their own brokerage and then they become the boss and they're not out selling. And they got to be out there. Yeah, you, you can't. You can't sell. stop. Because you're the, your best. You're well, your best yeah. And so, so anyway, long and short. Until you hire Mike Carbone. Well, know, he's he's, he's unbelievable. Most break. electrifying man in radio. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then I, so I said, I so I, I dialed the show down, and I spent. Now I spend every waking hour. That was a decade ago. Right. Uh, developing, cultivating, building into other talk show hosts. Right. So if someone wants to be a talk show host, I don't care what flavor of vernacular whatever i mean we're in the christian space real strong but right. we but we kind of get the whole talk radio thing i'm probably one of the most qualified people to help them right only well, because i've got only because i've got skinned knees and bruised you know i mean i've been banged up for all these years so i've kind of have any you know, energy though no i mean i, I just wish you were <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're going to come back and yeah. i want to talk about radio yeah, sure. a little bit more um, but let's take a quick break because it's time for that we'll be back with more um, and Stabler, you can put this card up and show a little bit of that type of stuff when we awesome. do that. So we'll do that. We'll be right back with more Camel City Chat. Welcome back to Camel City Chat. I'm John McPherson. I'm here with Stu Epperson Jr. And we say Jr. because Big Stu. Absolutely. I'm Jr. too. Yeah. You know. You know, I actually had Mr. Them Mac and Big yeah. Stu. Well, I used to have them. I had them change Jr. to the second when I was little. Really? I just couldn't stand it, and I was afraid someone would call me Jr. Now I absolutely love it. In fact, I didn't. I can't believe I'm saying this. Right. I actually called someone the other day, who I knew, you know. Right. But but they grabbed the phone like they didn't know who was calling. Who's this? Yeah. And I said, Junior. I said, I said it's Junior. Right. <laughs> they knew who it was. But when we have dads with that kind of, I mean, that's that's a god. The God's been good to us in that well, area. Oh, you know, hey, so, we both yeah. of our both sets of our parents have have put us um, up for success. I will say that much. I mean, it, your dad and mom, I mean, great people. My parents the same. I mean, uh, family businesses learned a lot. Um, now, I'm not in my family business anymore, but now here's the crazy thing. My grandfather, so when we leave here, it's right there. My grandfather ended his career in real estate after the railroad. He was rookie of the year at 70. So I have wow. myself, a cousin, a cousin, and maybe oh, a cool. second cousin that are now 
um, real That's course. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of it's it, so it, it is yeah. nice to got to get that next people. generation. I'm trying right. to get my kids in it big time. Like, I'm well, I was going to say, I noticed on the on the sheet over there, you yeah. got Jacksonville. Where are the other kids moving to? Well, there you're going to buy a station there. Well, we've got so we've got some stations that our family has that aren't in my immediate ownership, right. but they're. Our family has a nonprofit, a foundation. Now, are you an only child? I have three blisters, three sisters. Sorry, okay, three sisters, split. okay. I don't know. I can't believe I said yeah. that. So, yeah, that's, so, that's so, from your drug problem. Uh, Karen, Catherine, and Christy. Right. And um, wonderful right. sisters. And they're... Uh, are they in the business? They are not. Okay. But they love the business. They love Christian radio. Right. You know, they're all products, you know, like, you know, right. Sons of the Pioneers. Same like drug problem. Your, yeah, yeah. kind of so. I right. cannot believe you did that to me. That's the worst dad joke. <laughs> I and had you to say yeah, you, it, Dad it jokes, hurts. you know. Yeah. There's a bunch more where that came so from. So speaking <laughs> of your faith out there, yeah. we, we had started down. So I, I want to talk about, because your, your foot's hurt, and I'm assuming yes, it's sir. from playing basketball with the kids. I'm telling you, Christian radio is tough. Right. I mean, I'll yeah, show so that for the folks back they, home. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, you sponsor, uh, 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 you do some stuff with basketball to try and get the message out? It's God's favorite sport. Right. Why is the ball shaped like the world he created? Come right. on, John. Okay, Come I on. You. So I still try to play. Haven't done a lot of that lately with this broken foot. You played in high school, though, didn't you? Played for... Mount Tabor. Right. We did beat Reynolds our senior year. That's all that matters. I'm not. I'm not boasting or anything. Yeah, that's but we all that had. We, it was. A, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was a great group. You, you didn't celebrate that they won the state championship in football recently, did you? Here's the thing. I care less about my basketball accolades at Mount Tabor. Right. I care more about the fact that myself and a couple other kids were able to help start FCA. Okay. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes at Mount Tabor. At Mount Tabor. That's awesome. On the campus. And what year did you graduate? Eighty-eight. So you're two years behind me. So three yeah. years in age, but two years behind yeah. me. So that, that works out then. Okay. Yeah. Good. Right. So, but we know all the same people. And we right. know, and, and we know all the same people that missed out because they skipped town for Charlotte and the big city. And here we are holding the fort down. It's a great place to live. And they know where to find us. Right. You know, it's a great so, place to live. Yeah. So anyway, so I, you know, there, uh, we love Jacksonville because we got a grandkid down there now. Right. And we've got the Christian radio, uh, affiliates down there and, but, but, uh, there's no place like home. So let's talk about some fun stuff now. All right. So it's radio. Yes. So you have, you know, people don't, you know, I, I want to say Dick Edwards' name just to say Yes. It. I mean, phenomenal yes. guy. So, right. I mean, he, he, you know, I mean, when, when, when they ask us, do you want him to do a commercial for yeah. us? I'm like, yes. He's great. But so. Dick when, and Bruce and all yeah, those guys. When you start talking about um, people, it, some interesting things have happened throughout your career. So. Who was the first person that you worked for at SJS? What was, who was your, who's the. the Tom Hamilton hired me. Where does Tom Hamilton work now? Tom Hamilton, you know what? I think he's still at SJS. Right. So he's at SJS. He's setting me up so bad. Yeah. And so then SJS, who now owns SJS? Yeah, a really close friend of mine. Who yeah. I, I talk to him literally every day. So, so you, th this is where I'm excited. I mean, right, right. you know, uh, Curtis Media, great, great company. I'm not yeah. going to trash them. I, uh, you know, and Al Bunch is a nice guy. Al's one of my clients' friend. I like Al. I think they gave him a, an edict that I didn't agree with, okay. and that was going to sports. Yeah. yeah. Sports, okay. sports at SJ, I mean, you know, yeah. I think I can, I mean, and, you know, serious is a bad word, yeah. but, you know, I can go to XM and get sports if I want it. I mean, let's, sure, let's face sure, it. Sure. So, so what you can't provide me is, like, Howard Stern if I wanted to listen to Howard Stern right. or, you know, uh, you know, other people out there. Right. there. But right. you can provide me something, and that's what was the gem of SJS, and that is local right. programming. It was kind of the watering hole for the area. Right. Yeah. I, I, I had the backdoor number because I was, um, I don't want to say talent, but I, I had the backdoor number. You were there, man. And so I, if I saw a car accident, I'd call and say, hey, there's a car accident. And we'd know immediately if you're listening to SJS, you know. Right. Get off the Salem Parkway because yep. there's an accident coming up. But when they changed to sports, they you know they kept those specific you know Saturday shows, and then slowly they whittled down to where we right. weren't there anymore. Yeah. Um, you picked up Josh in this deal, which Josh is yeah. good, talented guy. Yeah, yep. Josh is good, and Josh can do local sports and stuff. But he, I think yeah. he can also do the you know I, afternoon drive. I, I heard his, else. I heard his I heard his top five yesterday. Right, I was driving around about five o'clock somewhere there. His top five. Where they do the big drum roll, they right. say, "Okay, number five is the hockey team to this." Right. Number four, the fifth one had nothing to do with sports. Right, it had to do with a bunch of grizzly bears that burrowed and hibernated under someone's home in Lake Tahoe. And that was That's the number cool. one. Th I know, That's but cool. they heard the snoring and right. they didn't know what it was. It was five of them. 
But my point is, is he's he's pretty dexterous. You know, he's he's, and he's talented, he and but he also understands that if if one of our teams does real well, if the Reynolds football team wins their conference, right? You know, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. If Mount Tabor team wins, there, we really got to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, no, no, no. That's 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 we turn off the next switch. level. Yeah, I mean, it's the Truth Broadcast Network's now the Tabor <laughs> Broadcast Network. But so when when we go to this, so so now you now own SJS yeah. and it's Five Signals. Yes. It, it's going to be a part of the Truth Network in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, correct. It's a, tr- it's a Truth Network station. Station. By, it's in our stable. Right. It's, it's, but know. it's but it's going to go back to some news talk. Well, we're we're looking at that. So okay. what we're looking at doing is is uh, you gotta you gotta get some people. It, out. I know you've talked. By, by the way, by the way, look. In, in terms of the sports talk format, right. I mean, I talked to one of the top broadcasters in America right. the other day who who made the case that it's it, popular. Well, it's popular and it's one of the most financially lucrative because everyone wants their team and everyone right. will. And companies will spend crazy amounts of money to advertise right. that wouldn't otherwise advertise to affiliate and associate with, and people want to hear that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so, and I'm a big sports guy. Right. You know, I played it, and not great, but you know, but I love it, and I watch it, and all that. Um, but, but we believe that there, there's a way. And even back in the day, if you remember what you do, it was news, talk, sports. Right. We would carry the games. Right. We would talk about. If there's a Super Bowl, yeah. that's what we're talking about, right? right? So so there's a way to have both, and there's a way. And so we're looking at potentially bringing back, you know, easing back on, you right. know, kind of phasing in some local hometown talk programs. Right. You've talked about bringing a real estate radio show. You've talked about uh, – now, you have you and the law now, don't you? Well, we're working on all that. Okay. So we're, right. we're, we're still – the team's out busy. Uh, connecting with some of the old friends and kind of bringing the old crowd back, you know, right. and saying, "Hey!" And then we're going to market it. We're going to. We want to be in the community. We want to connect. And uh, uh, the legend himself might even phone in once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you're going to call in the Golden Voice. No, I'm just kidding. GS. All right. So uh, yeah. I've been talking with him uh, from Facebook because I want him to do a sky, to a, to do a uh, Zoom with me. Oh, he'd be great. So sure. yeah, you should put him on here. I'm yeah, no, I want him. to. So you need to tell uh, him. I'll throw in a good one. All right, good, because I've been I've been doing that. And, you know, he's legendary. Uh, he's a great guy. He's yeah. just I feel so bad for him because I know he's he's really st- he misses his wife. I know he does. Um, and but uh, he's a good it man. Been three he's, years now. It's been th- it's, Is it two or three. Two or three years. Yeah. I talked to him, but you know I tell you he's he's closer to God than he's ever been. He's mm. he's just a he's just, just a great guy. He's a joy to talk to. He's he, he's very genuine. Always has been. He's you the ever guy talked that, to Eloise. I have not spoken with her in some time. Okay, but I need to reach out. All right, yeah, because I and, and if you do tell her, I said, hey, I need to get I, her on the radio, right? Well, I um, she would be great in here. I basically, what is it? Um, she would come into the uh, store in <laughs> Clemens. Yeah, all right. Yeah. She'd come in the store in Clemens. She was more of a Davy County kind of yeah. kind of person. So, yeah. and um, you know, uh, nice nice lady. So, yeah. um, I know that everyone always wants to find out who you know. There's, oh, is that really yeah. here? It was just a great lady. So, um, and Big Paul was cool. Big Paul, um, what a legend, man. Yeah. Those and, are some really crazy good days. And I'm still friends with a lot of those people on Facebook. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah, it they just neat. started a new WSJS community. Mike Finley st- helped start it. I don't know if you go on there. It's I'm a little fan with page. Mike. Right. So, I'm gonna, so I, I, I haven't commented there yet. It's kind of cool. He posted uh, a couple of days ago, tell your SJS story. You know, tell right. when you worked there or tell us your memories. Right. So he's trying to, we're trying to bring back that, but also like moving forward. Like, you know, show off the cool things we need to be right. showing off. Talk about the stuff that we're talking about. Talk about the football stadium over there near Haynes Park. You Upload know? Like, the James Mishner oh, interview yes. from that, for that type Why stuff. Why not? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, and I've talked to Chris Ann Parr. She's, um, we're friends on Facebook. Her son plays football. Yes. I, I played yeah. at West. Her kids have done great. Her daughter's yeah. amazing with the horses. I mean, they're just a right. wonderful family, you know. So, right. yeah, but this, back in the day, I mean, we were all hanging out. Bob Costner and, the, and Ed Skirk and yeah. all the guys in the news and, Running up and down the halls, and and uh, you know, the senator, congressman, then congressman Burr would come in, and all the the country western guys would come in to sing. And oh, I, I remember, remember, I remember the country western guys coming oh in, my. and I didn't even know who they were. Well, I remember walking out, and I hear this big booming voice, literally outside the lobby, like they were outside. Right. <clears throat> he said, "Man, you're tall," and it was Trace Atkins. Holy cow! And he was. Then, you know, right. like, and he had his guitar. But, yeah, you were. And they, were they all wanted to go on with, you know, like, 
dude, you're tall. <laughs> like, yeah, who's it, calling? Who's calling? Who what here? Yeah, no, but, but then we had all those kind of people. Like, oh, hey man, how's it going? We had the, the the NASCAR guy. You know, it was the number one yeah. NASCAR. You know, uh, station. Yeah. You know, all so, the races broadcast. And my by the way, my cousin's station has really taken off, uh, and they're doing NASCAR now. Right. You know, uh, <clears throat> let me do it for you real quick. Ready? Here it goes. Classic Country, ninety-eight point one. Goodness gracious. Yeah. All right, so we got we got two questions for you go. All right. Question one is um, through all of this, you've seen where Winston Salem was when you and I were driving around um, as as teenagers to where it is now. Uh, you like where it's going? What it, what, it, what what's the coolest thing that's changed for you since you know we don't have to go to Sport, Bo, Bocock Stroud um, to get oh, stuff know. downtown or over near the believe all that Coliseum? Stuff. We don't have to stand on our parents' shoulders right. and look inside of a of a little window that big to see a hot Krispy Kreme now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> remember yeah. we had to, it was a big deal. I, mean, yeah. I remember going to Mayberry back in the day after you know for ice cream after church right. Sunday nights and all. You know, I tell you, I love what's happening downtown. Yeah. I really like that. Like like, you know, if in, in the day, you know, when things were kind of slumming a little bit down yeah. there, if we said, hey, guess what? This young kid over here and his his new bride are moving downtown to Connors, like yeah, right. That's yeah, gonna man. last a second. Now there's people moving into you know what used right. to be a junk building is right. now a nice condo and there's oh and uh, restaurants and, and everything, coffee shops. Yeah. There's new coffee shops popping You've up. Got all a coffee time. shop problem. I, I oh, really you I hit really the thing. Now you're me. finally my height. <laughs> all right, last question. Call me out. <laughs> what do you want to be remembered for? Oh my soul, I want to be remembered for pointing people to Jesus. That's mm -hmm. what I want to be remembered for. I want to point people to Him. I want people. You, you find, you find that true north. You right. find the you find a connection with the Savior, the one we celebrate at Christmas and at Easter, but the one who, who came to give us peace and life. I want to be pointing people to Him till my dying day. Uh, you know what? I want to be like my dad when I grow up. I asked my dad the other day. I said, "Pops, I said, what about retirement, man? You're still." You know, he's had some tough health lately, but he still calls and busts my chops, you right. know, several times a day. He's probably called me during my, the show. My dad called me. Yeah, it's like, you know, so, so I was like, hey, how's your dad doing? I already had a little bit of sickness. I said, yeah. well, you know, I'm praying real hard for him, and everyone's praying for him and bugging me about it. Then he calls me and says, yeah. what's going on with this radio? Why isn't that show on? This and that. And I'm like, I start to get mad, you know, naturally. Yeah. You know, he's like, you know, you're kind of like, he's laying into you. And then, then I'm thinking, well, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that he's yeah. healthy to call me, you know. But he said something interesting. He said, I said, Dad, what about retirement? I mean, you know, you know this radio thing. He says, I tell you what, I'm gonna have a little retirement party. Yeah. He says it's gonna be in a church, and I'm gonna be in a box laying there dead. Yeah. And that's my R.I.P. That's my. Yep, that's you my know, RIP. and so, so I, w I really want to do as much as I can to to be a blessing and encouragement to others, this area, and ultimately honor the Lord. You know, until my you know dying day. And you don't, we don't know when that is. You know, so, right. so that's kind of I don't know. Probably doesn't answer your question question real well, but it does. Um, so finishing well is it should be all of our passion, you know. The the one thing before we go, uh, you're in New Canaan, right? Or when, and yes. when is that? So Friday mornings. Friday mornings at River Birch. I want to make sure to mention yes. that. Friday if people mornings, are interested, they can get in touch with you. It's a great men's group. Yeah. Uh, just show up at River Birch Friday morning at seven o'clock. It's right. a bunch of messed up guys like me, and we have a guy come in and share a story. And buddy of mine, Keith Rogers, is involved. Yeah, in that. Keith yeah. loves it. Yeah, man. So that's one. And then uh, oh, there's another person that's he, he got onto me the other day uh, over at Baldwin Properties. Um, oh, yeah, he's yeah. So not, not mentioning names. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, and so then, yeah. uh, um, but uh, Truth Network, how do we find you online? Truthnetwork.com? Truthnetwork.com, Winston Salem, a little bit of heaven on 97.7. You're killing me, man. You're killing me. And I, hey, listen. This has been awesome, though. Well, and yeah. I wish, the only, the, my only regret, as yeah, I yeah. said earlier, was I wish you were a little bit more animated, you know, and excited. <sighs> Got to dial it down, and I'm not even on the meds today. So I mean, I don't Jeff, even know how, what's going on here. Jeff you know? Smith, Smitty's notes. You've known about them for yes. a long time. We got to yes. thank Jeff. Jeff's yeah. one of our thank show you, sponsors. Jeff. Awesome. Um, and uh, I just want to thank you for being yeah, here today. Man. Well, thanks for being my friend all these years, uh, man. Definitely. This is a treat. This is like a huge thing. So yeah, well, this is it's cool. We need to do more together. I got to do. A, I'll do a selfie when we say goodbye, right. and I'll I'll shoot it out on all my. I mean, and then we'll 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 send you the link for this so people please can do. Learn a little bit more yeah, about and you. I'll put it on social and all that. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm not to brag, but I'm averaging like nine or ten likes every post. It's just going crazy. Nine or so, ten. Yeah, likes. I've got to. We're we're not even yeah. there yet. I had to arm wrestle my agent to even take this gig, and yeah. he I have the waivers and all that stuff. It's nuts, but uh. folks, we want to thank you for tuning in today to Camel City Chat with our guest Stu Epperson, the president. <laughs> 
founder of the, the Truth Network. Great guy, Winston-Salem's own, and uh, definitely check him out online. We appreciate you. Thanks. All the best. We'll be back next week with more Camel City Chat. <laughs>